Hi, this is a small tutorial on how to implement uh, mappings between Fire and OpenHR using Mirth Connect. First, I will show you the basic idea of Mirth Connect, the basic architecture. Uh, so here, the, um, the tool Mirth Connect is uh, an integration engine that works um, in terms of channels, communication channels, and each channel has a source and could have one or many destinations. The source is the entry point and the destinations are just the output. Um, and what they have is a source connector that has a type and the destinations also have destination connectors that have uh, uh, different types. For instance, a source connector could be an HTTP listener. So this will, uh, when this channel is deployed, will uh, create um, a web server to listen to on a specific path, on a specific port to receive information. Or it could be a TCP listener. So we'll receive TCP messages or HSM version, version two messages. Could be a file reader. So instead of receiving a, a message, um, in a communication protocol, we'll read a file from a certain location, could be a, the local file system, could be FTP, Samba, etc. So a network file system. Yeah. And the destinations are similar. You can send this to an HTTP um, interface outside Mirth. You can send this to a file. You can send this to a database, whatever. Yeah. You can do many things here. And in the middle, what you have is in the connector and in the source connector side will be the first half to the left. You have filters and transformers. And also in the destination part, you have filters and transformers. The filters are to check certain conditions. And if the condition is not met, the message will stop there. Yeah. So the data flow will be here if this uh, filter um, checks to false, the, the, the data no, will not go to the next step. And transformers, the idea of the transformers are to process data. So you can do many things. You can get an input and generate a different output. For example, you can get XML and generate JSON on the other side. You can also extract data from the input uh, data. So for example, you can get a, a message that is could be fire. Yeah. And, and you can get uh, different fields from fire and assign them to variables and the variables will be available for the steps after this transformer. Also, the, the filters could be zero to many and the transformers. So here, this is really optional. You could have none or you can have many filters. Also, the transformers, you can have none or many and the same here on the destination side. Yeah, so that is the basic architecture that is to help you visualizing what I'm going to show you right now. Yeah, so Mirth has uh, two different um, applications. Yeah, there is the um, the Mirth server that is running here. Here I have the Mirth server running and here I have the Mirth uh, administrator running. Yeah, the Mirth administrator is a front end to uh, connected to a server to uh, edit, deploy, and deploy your channels. Yeah, and create new channels. So here on the channel section, I have a new uh, channel that is Fire Test. So I will show you how I created this one. And here, basically, what you do is you define the data types. First, you define the name, then the data types. So for this one, I will receive fire and I will output JSON. Fire will be just a resource and JSON will be the OpenHR format. Yeah. And in the source, this is the source connector configuration. What I have selected here is the fire listener. This will uh, create a web server um, that has fire characteristics. Yeah. So what you can select here is the port number. You can select which version of fire are you going to use or support. You can define the, the, the path for the URL. So the URL will be um, uh, set using the path here and the port 
and this gray the gray fields is is the fields that are calculated you can't edit this but if i change this the the url will change yeah and this could be this slash this slash blah 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 yeah this is um very configurable and most of mirth is this way you it's just point click entering options yeah you have also options for the response if you want to generate a response or not if you want to return a response or not you have all the options there you also have networking options like the, uh, the max pro processing threads etc so there are a lot of networking options and since th this is fire you can choose between supporting XML, JSON, or both. You can choose uh, if you are going to support uh, the history system, so the versioning, uh, if you're going to support search, if you're going to support transactions. And then for each resource for this uh, release of, of Fire, you can also say, uh, for this resource, I will support these operations. Yeah. So what I did is I turned off most of the operations and I, for example, the capability statement, I set that to read. The bundle is all supported, really, it's not supported, but I just set everything supported. Then I added the um, diagnostic report that is read with uh, laboratory results. So here is read, create, and, and search because uh, those are the operations that we are supporting right now in the FireReach. Uh, for some resources and also the observations below here because those are also what we are supporting in the Firebridge. Yeah, so this is the configuration. Then what you can do is you can edit the filters. We don't have any filters and the transformers. Yeah, and in the transformers, you can have, as, as I said, many steps for transformation. Yeah, before doing this, what I did is uh, I need to have a clear um, view of first of the mappings. So this is a diagram of the mappings that I, I designed for the fire bridge. So this is the body temperature resource. Um, uh, this is the representing the profile, the fire profile, and the data points that we have inside. Yeah. So in 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 OpenHR, we the data points that we need is just the the date and time where the measurement was done and the measurement of the body temperature. Yeah. On the right side, we have the OpenHR template and the archetypes inside the template. And the arrows are the mappings that um, I implemented in the FireBridge. Yeah. The, the, the mappings that I designed uh, first and then implemented in the FireBridge. So basically, we are mapping uh, three dates and the measurement of the body temperature. Yeah. Two dates are at the observation and event point or levels in the model, and the start time is at the composition level. Yeah, with with that clear, what I did is because I have the I have an example for the uh, of the data of a resource that is an instance of this um, profile in the Firebridge that was uh, created or gathered by Renault. And for this, because I need a, an instance, a sampler instance, for the um, OpenHR template, what I did is I went to the toolkit, I uploaded to my account in the toolkit um, the body temperature should be to, 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 to somewhere here. Here I have the template, and what I did is I generated an instance that is compliant with the template. So I, I came here, I choose composition, generate, and it generates an instance of this template, com uh, compliant with this template, and um, it's a composition. So basically, I, I copied this uh, instance here in the message templates. So here is the inbound message to this transformer and this is the outbound message from this transformer yeah so i'm using the transformers to actually modify the format even though both are jsons yeah we are getting fire and we are retrieving J uh, uh, an open hr json yeah 
So this is this example is already in the file reach. This example was generated by the OpenHR toolkit. Yeah. And when we have these uh, examples here, we use them as message templates. If you go to message trees, we actually can um, read the nodes. Yeah. So what I'm what I want to do here is, for instance, in the first step of the transformation, I want to extract the patient ID from the file resource. So if you go to subject reference, you will see that this is patient slash one, two, three, four. I want to extract this one, two, three, four from the reference. Yeah. And set that to a variable that is patient ID. That is done with the mapper type of transformer. We have many types of tra transformers here. I will use just mapper and, and JavaScript. Yeah. And um, this is basically extracting a data point, processing that with a with a mini transformation here. What this does is matches the regular expression and the group is defined in the value part and I'm extracting that group, the value part. The, 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 this is group one. Group zero will be the whole matched value that will be patient slash one, two, three. So that is extracted from here, transformed through through this um, small regular expression, extract uh, this extracts just the part that I need and assigns that to the patient ID uh, variable. This is done just by, for example, this thing here is just drag and drop. It's just, if I drag drop, this will generate that expression. That expression is um, 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 e for x expression. e for x is an implementation of um, uh, JavaScript with native support to XML. But since, since this is re really um, a JSON, it's not doing the, the, the XML transformation. The XML transformation is done for other uh, data types. For example, if you receive a DICOM image, you can actually get the DICOM tags from the DICOM binary because Merth transforms the DICOM to XML. And, the, and with the XML, you can have expressions like this and extract the values there. Yeah, but this is not DICOM and it's not important. And this uh, variable will be assigned to something that is called uh, a channel map that is like a shared memory uh, for, all the, for all the channel. So after this step, the whole processing will, will be able to read this variable. Yeah, so if I select the next one, and I go to reference, you can see here the patient ID is available. Yeah, these are the variables that I will be defining in the channel map and are available to, to use, actually. Yeah, on this second step, what I'm doing is because we have the patient ID in the, in the resource, in the inbound resource, and we, we need uh, in the OpenHR API the EHR ID. So what I'm doing here is I'm getting the EHR for that patient ID, yeah? And if you see, I am executing here an AQL query. And the AQL is using that patient ID variable that I, I extracted in the previous step, yeah? And this patient ID variable is also, you can, you can use it just by dragging and dropping in the code, and it will generate the expression that allows you to access the value. Yeah. Uh, so this is just getting a hey, give me the EHR ID for this patient. Yeah. This is just Java code because here you can you can write JavaScript or Java. Yeah. Both. And then uh, with the result that is a JSON from the from the server, I use the JSON parse from JavaScript function to parse the JSON. And here I am extracting the first result that will be the, the patient ID if the, the EHR ID if the patient has any EHRs. Since I was testing with an existing EHR, this is okay. But here I need to add something that checks if the patient doesn't have an EHR yet created um, and return some kind of error. Yeah, that could be done very, very simple. But I wanted to do something that worked um, in full yeah the full flow working and then we can check all the errors and border cases etc 
So we need to get the patient ID, we need to get the EHR ID, and also this could be re written as a function that we can reuse from different channels. Yeah, uh, that is called code templates in in Mirth Connect. Yeah, so this could instead of being all this code will be just a calling to a function, and the mappings because we have this. Um, inbound we will receive fire and we will try to generate an open hr um, composition this is doing all the mappings that we need is mapping the 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 quantity magnitude and and value and mapping those three dates that i show you on the diagram yeah so on the left side of the this assignment is the expression that access this outbound message this is the, the composition the open nature composition so what i did here is i went to the node that actually contained the value for the measurement of the body temperature and i can just navigate this there are two items here and i can see um here this is just a text let me check the other one. Ah, this is the comment. Ah, this is the measurement. Yeah. This is the the measurement. This is the element. Um that measures the body temperature and then there is another that is a comment below that I won't use. So for instance, if I want to set a value that comes from the fire to uh, the uh, open nature composition, what I do is I select these green nodes here. So for instance, magnitude, just select, drag, drop, and I, that will generate the whole path to that specific node. Yeah. And what you, you need to do is just to set that to something. And if you go to the um, fire resource and search for the value there, that is what I want to map here. And that's it. That will take this value from the inbound message and put that in a node specific data point in the outbound message. And I did that for all the, the values on the on the mapping. Yeah, this this diagram. Yeah, so these arrows all have one line of code there. So after just dragging and dropping and assigning things, you can also before assigning you can also do um, value checks and you can you can check everything is there. Uh, there are no no missing values, no null values, etc. Yeah, and you will see that here there are two variables. Message represents the inbound message, and temp represents the outbound message. Yeah, and after we do all this. This will be the message that will be um, in the next available in the next step of the channel, yeah, with these values set. So the rest of the values uh, will be um, will be set to the value in the template. So anything that I pasted here will be there if I didn't change it here. Yeah, that is interesting because most of the nodes won't change in the in the in the composition yeah most of the nodes won't change uh, there are some nodes for instance that we might need to change um, for instance here we have a and this is not mapped yet is because we we didn't map the the composer because we we might need to map this to something that comes in the fire resource but are currently we don't have uh, information about that so who is the author of this measurement we don't have yeah so we don't have a, a something to map to the composer of the composition so this will be something that we might need to change in in the in the near future yeah uh this value for instance this uh context start time value will be changed here with the value from the inbound uh, message yeah and in case we receive, for instance, if we receive a date that 
the the format is not correct or is not the same that we use in OpenHR, we could do here small transformations and we can transform, for, for instance, this format into this format. It takes like three lines of code to do that. And you, uh, you can write a function and it's just define it, define it once and that's it. Yeah. And then this will be the output. Yeah. The transformed um, composition with the values from the fire resource. If I go to the destinations here, I have two destinations. The first destination is just to um, for debugging for me to log the the values for the, of the these variables that I defined in the previous steps, and those variables are available here, and I just detected a typo here is EHD <laughs> ID. I will change that very quickly. So this is my mistake here is EHR ID. So now is EHR ID there and patient ID. So I will change this here. And this is the um, message that is um, available here for this uh, specific destination. So this, this should be the message after the transformation that we did in the, in the previous transformer. Yeah. And here I need to also change that to that one. The second destination is what we are connecting with uh, EHR base. So this is an HTTP sender. We have many types of um, destination connectors here. And this is also a uh, point and click. Yeah. What you do here is you just put the URL of the server running. And since this endpoint needs the EHRID, that is why I extracted the EHRID before I did that little lookup. Um, this is the, the, the way to reference that variable. Yeah. And you don't need to remember that because you can just drag it from the variables menu and drop it here and that's it. Yeah. And you have a, a lot of options for the HTTP sending. So this is a, basically an HTTP client configuration. Yeah. So this will be a post to this URL. Um, you can also add query parameters. You can also modify the headers. Uh, since the headers for me are just fixed values, I just set the values here, but you can also, depending on something on your processing, you can also set the values for some headers to variables, to variable values. And you can actually here set a variable. Yeah. Uh, and this is the body of what I'm sending to that URL. Yeah. And this is just the encoded data from here, from the menu. It's just drag, drop, and that will be generated. Yeah. So that will be the opening chart resource. So the next step, that is what, what it takes to, to create the mapping. Yeah. This is a small mapping, but the process to create um, a larger, more complex mapping is the same. We just need to define more mapping rules. Yeah. I, I will save this channel and I will deploy this channel. Yeah with the changes I just made. Yeah. When you deploy, I will clean up the logs. Uh, you can see here in the dashboard, the deploy channels, the current status, and uh, how many messages what were received, filtered, queued, sent, and uh, how many have, have errors. And you also have uh, information about the last deployment date. So this is running and should be running on port 80, 80, 80, 80, I guess. So I will just check that. And you will see here, this is our channel. Yeah, 80, 80, 80, 80. So I will go to Insomnia REST Client. And I have here a couple of uh, requests. So the first request is to get the metadata. Uh, this is 8888 fire slash metadata. And if I execute that, I should get something back that says which resources and which operations are supported to, for those resources. Yeah. For example, bundle is there. Capability statement is there. This is the configuration I show you in the fire, um, connector. 
uh, diagnostic report, read, create, search, etc. Yeah, and here I have an example that is sending um, readings of uh, body temperature to the the, um, the channel. This, the file, this this is the Mirth Connect channel. Uh, 8880 uh, slash fire slash observation because you need to uh, use a specific endpoint here for a specific resource. So if I send this uh, and let me just capture the, the packets to EHR, this is capturing anything that is going to uh, EHR base. So let me go back to Insomnia, send this. Uh, I should get a 200 and nobody because I'm not returning anything to the client right now that could be configured and you can see here the um, all the transactions the first transaction is an AQL query that is the lookup for the EHR ID yeah, if I follow this this is just the lookup for the EHR ID and this is the patient ID extracted from the resource and I get uh, an EHR ID here yeah so that worked okay and the second one should be the commit of the, the uh, a, a composition and here you can see the ehrid in the url and if i go to http here this is my generated composition with the values mapped from the fire resource and we got the same resource back because i set the headers to be um return representation yeah and you can see here the values for instance of the body temperature are here yeah quantity celsius 37.5 yeah and that's it this works i'm getting the right values from from the server and also this is really fast to to set up yeah what the the on the other side what we don't have yet because I need to take a look on how that is done, is validation of resources based on, on fire profiles. So how to add that step in, um, in the Mirth channel. I think that could be something that we can do in a filter, maybe calling a, a Java library. Yeah, so uh, we can integrate java code into mirth connect so we can extend mirth connect with our functionality and we can have a small program that actually does the the validation of the of the resource against a specific profile um and yet that that could be integrated in the code and could be done in a in a in a filter because the filter says ah if this is not valid well i won't process on the next steps and that's it so that is the role of, for a filter so i need to take a look at that how that is done and also how the um, terminology validation is done. Currently, we are not using the terminology validation in, in the in the Firebridge. We, we disabled that because there are missing codes. So we are getting failures that uh, we can't um, work with right now. Um, but yeah, those are two things that could be integrated and, and improved in, the, in this approach. But I think this approach is faster than um writing java code for the mappings yeah and it's always the same approach it's the same thing is um everything is done in the same way you define your channel you define um your processing rules here and mappings etc you uh, and and that's it and then we post everything to to ehr base and this post uh, can be re reused and here also this is not code it's just configuration yeah, so there are a lot of, th it's less code. So if this is less code, uh, it's also less bugs. And this doesn't mean that my transformer, for example, this um, extraction of the variable, this is configuration, but this in, in the background generates code. And if you go to generated script, you can actually see the code generated. But if you use this form, this configuration form, the the code that will be generated will be always the same and always will work. Yeah, so this is a, a big plus, I think, speed and consistency and a standard way to do things. Yeah, so that's all. That's everything I have for now. Bye bye.